action. You're in the helicopter, it's loud, you got your fins on, your wetsuit, mask, snorkel, ready to go, and then you jump. Danger. You can hear the ice hissing and cracking all around you. Adventure. When you cross the equator, you have to ask King Neptune's permission to become a shellback. You're listening to Sea Story. Episode 58, The Jump. I am AWS-1 Patrick Bodecker. I'm a naval air crewman, and this is my sea story. Uh, I joined the Navy in 2011. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a naval air crewman flying the back of the helicopters. I wanted to swim, and I liked helicopters, so I joined. I ended up in Pensacola after boot camp and went to rescue swimmer school. Uh, it was an eight-week course with most of the time spent wet and cold and trying to figure out where your next breath of oxygen was going to come from, but made it through that school. The next thing I knew, I found myself on a 10-month deployment at HSC 15. I was out to sea in charge of the back of the cabin in the helicopter. Two pilots up front, me sitting in the back, and somebody else who was somehow newer than me sitting next to me asking me questions. You're told you're going to be a rescue swimmer, which pretty much is just search and rescue and then jumping out of the helicopter into the ocean. But that is just a small part of the story. It's a lot more that we do in the back of the helicopter. We do logistics stuff, passenger, cargo transfer, that kind of stuff. We deliver mail to the carriers, things like that, and that's all something that we deal with. But then we also do tactics, a lot of tactics. We work with special operations so we can provide close air support. We have different weapons we can mount in the helicopter. We have the 762 machine gun. We can put 50 calibers in the door. We man those guns as crewmen, and then we also have one crewman in the back, the crew chief, and he's the one who takes a lot of tactical lead in the situation and figures out how we're going to employ the weapons in the best way possible. My favorite part is still jumping out of the helicopter into the ocean. There's really nothing like it. You're in the helicopter, it's loud, you're wearing all your gear, you got your fins on, your wetsuit, mask, snorkel, ready to go, and then you're really just waiting for three taps on the chest from the crew chief, that means go, and then you jump. We spend a lot of time training in water. We train for people who don't want to be rescued, people who are panicking, people who are conscious, unconscious, breathing, not breathing, injured, an injury. Train for pretty much every scenario you can imagine in the water. The way it works is we sit in the back of the helicopter, we get dressed out into our swimmer gear. Um, we usually fly in a flight suit with vest on and everything. So we put on, it's called a TRISAR vest. It's a harness actually, we can be hoisted on it, we got a radio in there, we got some basic equipment in the vest. We put on our fins, mask, snorkel, and then we sit in the cabin door and wait until we're ready to go in. Goal is to get us as close to the survivor as possible. It doesn't always happen that way. You're pretty much just sitting in the door, just looking down at the water. You can just kind of watch the waves fly by. You can't hear anything anymore because our helmet's off at that point, so we have no communications and we're literally just waiting for the taps which means go. There's a lot of things that go through your mind when you're sitting in that cabin door. Be nervous, kind of running through procedures in your head, things you've gone over a hundred times, but when you're actually sitting there, you know, the adrenaline starts going and you're ready to go, kind of thinking through, like, hook this up first and go through this first. I usually lean forward a bit and I'm just trying to see where the guy's at in the water because they're flying towards him, try to see it. Next thing you know, you're getting those taps and you jump, you start falling, 10 feet, 15 feet, if it's a bad day, maybe 20 feet. Training just takes over, so you just hold everything tight, let the water hit you, take a breath before you hit it. That icy water just kind of hits you and you're just instantly about as wide awake as you can be. If you're wearing a wetsuit, you can just feel it start seeping in everywhere. From then, it's just trying to find that survivor because you knew where he was when you jumped, but you moved. There's a lot of waves. I've jumped on a couple of occasions where the sea state was a little greater, so you're kind of riding the waves, trying to look for where somebody's bobbing in the water, and then uh, start swimming. And that's kind of where the training kicks in again. Every time I've done it so far at that point, once you're in the water and you find the survivor, training just kicks in, and it's just habit. I've done it a hundred times. It's just like driving a car, I know how to do it. 
You're wearing a lot of gear, so you're not as mobile in the water as you'd expect in the swimming pool. You've got a wetsuit on, and then you've got your harness on over. You can swim, but you're not nearly as fast as you'd think. Because of all the weight on you, you sit low in the water, and you're just kind of kicking your feet, paddling up, trying to see over the waves. When you spot someone who starts swimming that way, um, I usually take three or four strokes and then look up, try to find them again, because those waves do push you around, and it's, it can be disorienting, especially at night. Find the survivor, get a quick assessment. Is he conscious, unconscious? All right, this is how I'm going to approach him. This is how I'm going to get him ready. If they're conscious and talking, keep them calm and compliant. Have them do exactly what you need them to do so you can get them back in the helicopter. And then once we got the survivor all packaged up and ready to go back in the heel, we get hoisted back into the helicopter. It's, uh, usually they come into a 60-foot hover, so it's a little bit of a ride up, but I enjoy it. It's amazing how long you spend in the water. They told us from the beginning in training, it's like, hey, if you're up in the helicopter, you can expect, you know, 10, 15 minutes in the water. It's kind of how long it takes to really get somebody ready. If you got to get them in the litter or anything like that, it's, it takes a little bit of time. Um, by the time you're back in the helicopter, it felt like 30 seconds. Personally, I've never been lucky enough to get to do that, or unfortunate enough. Both deployments we've had, people perform actual rescues. I just never happened to be flying during that time. It's really just a hit or miss luck thing if you're going to get one or not. And when you do, then it's probably the highlight of your career at that point. If you like my story, subscribe or give Sea Story five stars. Coming next. When you cross the equator, this is like a little fun ceremony we do. They make like little fake green eggs in hand. They made us do like little obstacle courses and ask permission to become a shellback. Sea Story is brought to you by America's Navy. Learn more at Navy.com.